So welcome, bienvenidos. I'm Nicole Lezen, one of the local consultants, along with Nicole Young, who facilitates a countywide initiative called the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based, or CORE, Investments, which is a collective impact approach to achieving equitable health and well-being for all people across the lifespan in Santa Cruz County. And we're co-facilitating today's conversation on harnessing local data to create the core conditions for healthy environments with Eva Holt-Russmore from DataShare Santa Cruz County and Eric Morris from the Santa Cruz County Health Services Agency. Today's session, like other core events, is being held bilingually in English with Spanish interpretation, thanks to our team members, uh, Stella Lauerman, who's providing the interpretation today, and Gisela Carrasco, who translates comments and questions in the chat and whose voice you're hearing right now. And now I'll turn it over to Eva, who's going to tell us a little more about DataShare, the platform we're exploring together today. Hi, good morning. Happy to be here with you all today. Um, my name is Eva Holtz, and I am an impact consultant based in Santa Cruz County. Um, I'll say a couple words about DataShare. If you're less familiar with it, this is our landing page. DataShare is an interactive data platform with over 400 indicators from local, state, and national sources. Um, we aim to have an updated version of all data and reports with the most current information, and DataShare is constantly changing and improving, with new indicators being added on a quarterly basis and annually. Um, DataShare is the central hub of information that aims to create alignment uh, by allowing everyone to measure shared outcomes with the same metrics and indicators. Um, this is big data, so um, a little bit different from some of the small data that um, our incredible agencies collect across the county. Um, and it does help create an easy visualization of some previously static data sets like the CAP report. Um, the integration of data sets such as the safety net clinic utilization data um, was also not previously available to the public. And this is a platform that allows um, for that public facing data to happen that was um, previously not. Um, the uses for the platform are varied. Students, researchers, advocacy, program evaluators, grant writing, and fundraising are some of the ways in which the platform has been used. Um, because the platform is constantly changing and in conversation with community, we have come up with um, some equity guiding principles that I want to share with this group, and hopefully um, some of these principles will inform our conversations um, when we go into breakout groups. Um, these principles are helpful in our decision making and prioritization of uh, data actions um, that we do, our communications, our literacy efforts. Um, we try to be as aligned with these principles and the aims of these principles as possible. There are our North Star, <clears throat> excuse me, um, so that we're being more than just intentional, but so that we have an actual roadmap um, for what we're working to improve with the platform and uh, with data literacy across the county. Um, so we've used these principles um, to be able to integrate data sets like the CAP or the Community Action Project indicators. So um, I think I will leave it at that for now, and we can um, move on into our conversation. Happy to be here with you all. Okay, so I will share a different part of my screen now and walk through some ways to navigate the core results menu and how to get to some of the indicators that we're going to talk about in more detail today. So give me just a second. Find my way back over there. Okay, so you should be seeing the same data share landing page that Eva just described, and I'll show you how to get to the core results menu and the indicators for the um, healthy environment. We also just wanted to highlight a few things about this page. First of all, you can view it in Spanish if you prefer and there are other translation options as well in the upper right-hand corner and this piece right here up front. And then we can also 
Um, as Eva mentioned, there's some local reports that you can access that are highlighted here on the landing page. You can also get some help with navigating beyond what we're doing today. Um, there are a lot of great tutorials and other ways to look at things here. You can um, find your way to the core conditions through these focus dashboards. That's relatively new. And then you can contribute your own content as well. And that's a great way that the site keeps getting fleshed out and having more options for people to, um, to find useful, relevant data for whatever it is that you're working on and the connections across them. So I'll just show you what I think is the fastest way to get to the core results menu, which is a subset of a lot of the data on DataShare. And I usually go to this local progress page and then click on core results menu. And you can see there are other um, compilations of local data there as well. I really encourage you to, if you haven't already, to find your way through some of that. So on the core results menu page, there's an overview of all the core conditions and the core vision, mission, and values, as well as some other tools that we won't go into today, but that you might find helpful in the future. But today we're gonna go here into the results menu that collects indicators for each of the eight core conditions for health and well-being, And we're gonna focus on this one, the healthy environments one, and look at each of these indicator sets here in these four impact areas, quality of the natural environment and natural resources, climate change resiliency, safe, affordable, and accessible recreational spaces, and safe, affordable, and accessible transportation systems. So as we do that, we just have a few reminders for you that we really hope that the core results menu um, will be useful as a way to curate smaller sets of indicators than the hundreds of, of them that are available on DataShare more broadly. So it's really important to remember that this is a subset of them. And it, we're not trying to restrict which ones are looked at, but just try to make it more manageable to look at a few together. And the ones that appear here on the core results menu are really the results the result of a lot of um, co-design and vetting from many different partners and uh, different sectors in the community and are the product of really of years of work, of large convenings, small convenings, um, reviews of different lists of indicators. Um, the core steering committee members helped with that a lot, the Human Care Alliance, the Children's Network, the Elderly and Disabled Transportation Advisory Committee, many, many others have weighed in on the list that you see here. Um, as I mentioned, there are a lot more indicators on DataShare itself. So this was just trying to collect some key ones related to, um, to each core condition to have a, a snapshot or portrait for that core condition and some of the, the impacts related to it. The other tools um, are built around these same core conditions and align with them. And this is really a work in progress still. It's come a long way since uh, DataShare was first launched in 2019. And it's really a continuous improvement process in itself that will continue to, to fill out as more data are added. And you'll see as we de delve into these, and if you have gone into them in the past, that there are quite a few gaps still. So there's some things on this list um, in healthy environments and in the other core conditions that are really placeholders or a wish list from that vetting process where someone or a group said to us, we really would find it useful to have X, Y, or Z piece of data or this indicator. And in some cases it exists and is included. In other cases it doesn't, but might be forthcoming. The whole landscape of how data are accessed and how um, frequently they're updated changes really quickly. So we didn't want to um, ignore a wish list item just because it wasn't currently available, thinking that it might become available in the near future. And that has happened with several indicators. But in that same spirit, today's conversation is about using the data that we do have with flaws and gaps um, as a springboard for discussion about what we can all do as a community to contribute to equitable health and well-being for everyone in our county. We're not letting the data gaps stop us from those conversations. And some, in some cases, the gaps themselves 
can lead to some, some interesting ideas and deeper dives about the, the policies and programs that are in place or could be in place to address some of those gaps. So we hope that, um, that you'll share your ideas for what else would be relevant and useful, as well as um, other ideas that you have for continuing to make the whole data share platform, as well as the core results menu, more useful to different kinds of organizations and sectors in our community. So when we focus today, we're going to go into some smaller groups. And we're also having um, future sessions similar to this one, as we have in the past, looking at each of the core conditions in the same way. So what can we learn from the data that we do have? What, what can we learn from the gaps? And how can we help fill those? So we'll look at each of the four impact areas. I'll scroll through them quickly right now. So the first one is quality of the natural environment and natural resources. And to get to it, you can just click right on that on the results menu. And you can see that for each of these broader impacts, there are more specific indicators. In this case, concern for the environment, annual ozone air quality and particle pollution, environmental stewardship, the health of county beaches, and some other indicators that don't have data at this moment. These are the kinds I was mentioning earlier that are really placeholders, but might have some other related content or reports, as you can see for the natural capital valuation tool has a link to a report here. And so these that do say see more data, these are the ones that we're gonna to explore together. Go back to the, and each of these is similar. It has some data in place and some missing. And for the ones where we do have data, you can go another level deeper. There are these summaries of trends and comparisons, but you can also go further. And this is the kind of thing we'll do in these small groups and look at more specific sources, trends, et cetera. And we always make a pitch that DataShare really rewards spending some time going through all of these, um, these levels of data, both for the core results menu and in general. So we hope this encourages you to explore if you haven't already and to engage with the data in different ways. Um, so that's what we're about to do together. We'll go into small groups for each of these. So everyone will have a chance to review and discuss at least one or more of these indicators together today, but we hope you'll have time to explore them on your own later if they're ones that are particularly interesting or relevant to you and your work. And we'll just, um, we'll do our best to explore what we can together today, but just know that we'll, um, we're not expecting to get through all of them. We'll assign everyone randomly to one of four groups. Each group will have a facilitator and an impact area to explore. One group will stay with me in the main room with interpretation and recording. The other three breakout rooms will be English only with no recording. And the facilitator will lead a brief round of introductions in the breakouts and uh, strongly encourage a volunteer to uh, volunteer to report back to the larger group. And then we'll just use a process to go through one or two indicators um, in more depth and see what kinds of discussions and questions come out of that. So we'll also have some questions to explore. Let me go back to my slides so you can see those on the screen and we'll also have those in the chat. Okay, sorry, a couple, too many things. There we go. So these are the questions that we'll explore together in the small group discussions. Any questions before we launch into that? Questions for us about the process? Okay. 
not seeing or hearing any. Okay, here we go. All right, thanks everyone. So let me um, pull up the indicator that our group was supposed to look at. Does anybody want to volunteer at this point to report back to the larger group? Um, I'm happy to, I guess, you know, let me know. Let's see if I'm the right person. I'm happy to. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah. So our group is going to look at the quality of natural environment and natural resources. It seems like it'd be relevant to everybody's work. Um, so let me share my screen again. And feel free to follow along on your own screens if you'd like. So are you seeing mm -hmm. the results menu? Great, okay. So let's just see how far we get with this one and then we can pop through some other ones. So in the quality of the natural environment and natural resources, I don't know how much experience you've all had with DataShare. Have you had a chance to to play with it a little bit? I have, yes. Great. So but I don't want to speak for everybody else. So if there's others that need more um, orientation, that's, I totally understand. Eloy, Dario, have you had a chance to, to play around with data share at all? Uh, yeah, I have. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have uh, uh, a little while ago. Okay, great. You can, you can go ahead and move forward. I'll catch up. Okay, very good. So um, so as I mentioned earlier, when you see the see more data, that is usually a chance to get into a little bit of a deeper dive. Um, this one has some comparisons, both for annual um, ozone air quality to prior values, to trends over time, um, mm -hmm for both air quality, ozone air quality, and particle pollution. We'll just take a quick look at those. And for all of the indicators on DataShare, when you click on the see more data, you can get a lot more detail. So in this case, the source is the American Lung Association. It measures a, uh, a period from 2018 to 2020, and it's got some comparisons to different um, indicators. Oh, excuse me, the dog is <laughs> pulling me over. Um, it explains the, in this case, there's a, a grading system basically. So there's a one for grades A that corresponds to A through F. And you can see that we don't have a ton of variation. There's some from one to two in these different time periods. And we don't have um, a lot of disaggregation of this particular indicator, for example, by geographic areas or zip codes. Some of them have more than others. So this one, if, you, if we did have that, it would show up here under the indicator values section. Welcome, Sonia. We're just digging into one of the indicators here together. Morning. Good morning. So just looking at the ozone air quality indicator here, what, what reactions do you have? Do you see particular things missing? Would you, is there something you would add to this that you already know about from your own work or? Um, not from my own work, but I would encourage or maybe want to look at like uh, not just the American Lung Association, but the purple um, air quality, you know, monitoring. Okay. Um, that's another data. It's like purple air. They have, you know, a number of different data points um, around our community that I think could be another layer within this it's not specific to ozone, but it's specific to air quality. Okay. So you can, if that's not something that's already on data share, and I don't know off the top of my head, as I mentioned on the original landing page, you can propose additional mm -hmm. data points and indicators. So 
that might be something to think about, but let's, we can back out of this in just a second and look at the um, particle pollution and see if there's more there. Any other reactions to this? What's missing, what it, what it tells you or doesn't tell you? And I'll just for those who are just joining, I'll scroll down as well and explain a little bit for those who might be less familiar with data share. For each indicator, there's a lot you can do um, to look for suggested other indicators. So in this case, it does have a link to high particle days and annual particle pollution. And we can look at those in just a second. But there are also other um, reports like the uh, a community health needs assessment, other data resources, um, at least two of the organizations in this group are listed here as community resources. We did not plan that, but you can see the, the um, O'Neill Sea Odyssey survey results and Rehan Asun's community-based survey summary results. Um, I don't know if there are updates to those, but those are possibilities for something else to look at. And then you can look at different, if, if there are infographics that the um, HCI conduit that, that manages the data share platform, if they have access to those from other communities, they will. this is where some of that kind of thing would appear. So both local things and uh, local data reports and indicators, as well as regional or statewide or even national ones. You can see some of those others down here too. Any questions about navigating or, or looking through some of this data? So, so what, um, what's another indicator you might like to look at together? You can go back to the... Look at the particle pollution one as well. It's interesting that chart that we were just looking at that ozone air quality, it, you know, there's not a lot of um, that chart doesn't tell us a lot because it's only looking at a, you know, if it's an A or a B, it's not giving us the actual numbers over time to see change. Um, the the num you mean that it's just a composite gray yeah it's just a composite actual, the, yeah correct, and this sorry. one too you can see this one I think I wonder if this would give us the actual raw data that's a good question Tracy. I'm going to click on this and see. Oh, whoops. I'll have to investigate that. I think there is a way with some of these to get the, the raw data that this is based on. Mm -hmm. um, but it is not obvious. Yeah, I mean, it's just interesting, right? Because the chart itself does not give us a lot of insight. But, mm -hmm. you know, when we're looking at something of high particle days, you have to get down further into it to really start to see what the trends are over time. Exactly. And, and here, um, I'm just looking to see if there's something more related to um, what you were mentioning earlier, Tracy, about the purple days. Yeah.
And then these, um, I think these are examples of things where a composite or an average will mask a lot of variation. And that's one of the things that's difficult about these kinds of data sets. So I'm just curious, what, what else does, what other kinds of questions does this raise for you? I, I know some of you are more involved in these air quality indicators than others. Do you have questions for each other or? Welcome, Miguel. Are you aware of other data sources that you think would give us more insights into this or more, more variation across the county? Okay, Miguel, I, I see your note. Thank you for that. Um, in terms of another indicator that might be, when I go back, I'm scrolling back to the um, high level um, indicators under impact one, specifically okay. around healthy beaches. Okay, let's see, in impact one, This one here, Health of County Beaches, Tracy? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna find the, I'm trying to find the link to share here, but there's um, Surf Rider Blue Water Task Force. Um, would be an interesting, another data point to share in terms of healthy beaches in our community. Okay, I'm I'm not familiar with that. Oh, I'll share it with you. Yeah, hold on. Great, thank you. You can see here, um, just again for those of you who are just joining when an indicator doesn't always tell you everything you wanna know, you may have an opportunity to look at other indicators that, are, that, that DataShare thinks are related. And then there are also um, promising practices that are both um, some local ones and regional ones, state and national ones as well, and other resources and reports. So again, we have a couple of the organizations represented in our group here under community resources. And on the main data share landing page are places where you can add suggestions for these. This is Sonia, this is great. Um, I'm multitasking and listening in, but I did visit the data share scc.org website and kind of cruised around all the indicators and um, the dashboard. And it was so interesting. Um, I, I'm just kind of processing. I want to dig in deeper with some of these um, links and, and um, but thank you so much for providing this space for this. Thank you, Sonia. Appreciate that. And yes, I said um, earlier, if, if you haven't been um, exploring data share, it does reward some time spent going down some rabbit holes and um, looking at some of these different pieces. And, and so 
unfortunately, the, the data on this particular um, impact area and indicator isn't as detailed as some others, but that could change over time with contributions from all of you and suggestions. And we were just um, saying how even in the time that in the three years or so that DataShare has been up and running, there have been a lot more additions, both of data points and how detailed they are. So um, it's worth checking back if something that you are looking at isn't necessarily answering some of the questions that you have. Um, sometimes, even in a short period of time, we get some, for example, we get some data that are disaggregated in different ways by zip code or, or ge geography, um, race and ethnicity, different kinds of indicators um, have more detail that way. So. Um, Thank you, that's good to know. I'll keep that in mind. Off the top of your head, are there any areas or categories that um, fall into the, that that kind of needs more more data input? Well, lots of them. Um, so yeah, so that's one of the reasons we wanted to have these discussions to talk about what all of you think um, would be useful or or missing. Some of you who are working. Um, day to day in these areas, um, are there are there data points that you use in your work that that you think um, others would benefit from looking at that just haven't been connected to data share yet? So that's I'll, I'll go back to the um, the main data share page and just a reminder that you can contribute content here. There are guidelines for it, just, just um, in terms of how recent the data might be, how the intervals of data collection. Um, so it's not automatic, but you can make suggestions and reports in particular. Um, sometimes those are things that get buried inside um, an agency's reporting, but might be useful to others if you've gone to the trouble to collect some information through a, through a survey or um, or other work with, with your own constituencies, those are really great to share here as well if, if your organization is able and willing. And I know Tracy and Eloy have seen some of your work, work already on this site, some of your reports, so. Other questions or reactions to the, in particular to the, Healthy environment indicators. And Sonia, in case you missed it earlier, you can get some of the um, trend lines and uh, comparisons from this snapshot page, but you can go into more data by clicking on the see more data piece and then sometimes when they're when data are not available there's a, just a placeholder for those indicators. Okay, great. Thank you. Just go into the water pollution one here. So this is one that's um, from a local telephone survey. So it's only got these two data points. And it was last updated in July of 2020. So that's getting to be several years ago. And then some of these, for example, you can see an indicator here. This isn't part of this particular impact area, but let's say there's something like this about installing higher efficiency water fixtures. So something in public policy could change, you know, if there are substantial rebates, um, more promotion of this that inspires uptake, then this is the kind of thing where you would be able to see a data point over time. 
and try and understand what had changed. We are about out of time. So we're gonna go back to the main group. Any last comments before we are joined by everyone else? Thank you, Nicole, for walking us through this. It's every time I go in here, I like find something else. And so it's same. super interesting. Exactly the same reaction. So thanks for bearing with us as we explore together. Um, I really encourage you to, to share more ideas. Um, and I think we're going to have everyone back with us in just a second. Tracy and Eloy and Dario, are there ways that you have used data share already that you want to share with the group? Uh, I, I haven't been able to, uh, not yet, but um, mm -hmm. I've looked through it and it just looks really interesting. And I'm sure uh, as we plan out new uh, research projects out here that we will be consulting with it. Uh, good. Just well, really, it just looks like a really good start too. Um, and a great place to aggregate uh, reports from different agencies. Great, well, yeah, let, let us know what, what you end up doing. We're always interested in how, how people are using it. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We missed you. Okay, so I think am I leading the, the part yes, out here? Go, go ahead. Go ahead. So why don't we start? We'll go through each group and tell us what your impact area was and the specific indicator or indicators that you looked at. And then give us a synopsis of what your discussion was like. And it's it's okay if you didn't make it through all the questions. So uh, Nicole, you wanna start us off? Who is there someone in your group that's gonna be your reporter? Tracy graciously agreed to report back. Great. Go ahead, Tracy. Um, what can I say about our we um, our group spent some time digging into the first impact area of healthy environments, looking at quality of natural environments and natural resources. Um, we spent a little bit of time digging into specific indicators around um, water pollution, as well as looking at the data for um, ozone air quality and looking at kind of some of the different data that is there. And really, I think um, the high level takeaway for us is that, you know, when you first get into data share, it's, you know, you have to really get into the lower levels of the data to really find the specific and start to look at the trends because at the higher level, there's some really rich, you know, aggregate data. But then when you get down, you can really break it down to see trends over time. Um, which for me is always the takeaway from this that, you know, there's so much here um, and it takes a moment to really dig into it all. So um, for me, it's also always time well spent looking at this. Thanks, Tracy. We also um, didn't get through all the questions and didn't have a ton to work with with those particular indicators, as Tracy said, but um, it, it was nice to see several of the organizations that were in the group and on the call um, represented in some of the local reports. And so just a, a reminder to everybody that if you're collecting data for your own purposes that might be relevant and useful to others, even if it doesn't show up as an indicator, um, it's great to share that through data share. And in that impact area, were there any indicators that your group talked about that you felt were data gaps or missing pieces or things that would be of interest to help tell a fuller story? Yeah, Tracy had some ideas. Go ahead, Tracy. I definitely had a couple of ideas of, you know, data that's being collected around our community that I think would add another layer of richness to what's currently there. Um, that it could either, it would need some, I need to look at it a little bit more to figure out exactly where it would best align, if it's water pollution or if it's healthy beaches. But, you know, we have information that has been collected for 
I would say five, 10, 15 years from the Santa Cruz Surfrider Foundation with the Blue Water Task Force. And that has a lot of great information um, around bacteria levels at our number of beaches throughout our county. Um, and then in terms of ozone and air quality, I had recommended looking at purple air and finding some other data points over time. Those are just, those are specific. I think the Blue Water Task Force one would be a really great addition to um, what's here to paint another layer of picture for our county and health. Great, that's super helpful. Uh, a couple of those things that you mentioned, I had never heard of before. So we always love to <laughs> yeah, I, I hear about new data it. sources and- I can read, yeah. I, I will try and submit it, but here's the, um, just the brief website for Surfrider. Um, I think they would be great over time. Thank you. Okay, anything else from group one, focusing on the quality of the natural environment? Okay, how about group two? Eva, that was your group. And you were focused on climate resiliency, right? So yeah. someone from your group that's going to be your reporter? Oh, I think I'm just going to fall and told them in this process. We kind of just got right into it. Um, <laughs> we've got to assign someone. Um, yeah, so we talked about climate change resiliency and um, just um, some of the data that is available and then started to dive deep into kind of like what does this data mean in the larger picture. So we looked at energy conservation and renewable energy. Um, but our group really had questions of, you know, okay, well, this is just showing a, you know, a trend over time on residential gas use. What about commercial gas use? And what about measures to um, reduce gas use? Um, so it was really an interesting conversation to think about how we're tracking solutions um, and not just um, the data that shows progress. Um, and I don't know if um, Lisa or Lauren want to say, I think you guys had some great um, points and then I'll, if you want to hop in and then I'll say something about the promising practices that um, cut us off when we had to go back to the main group. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thanks, Eva. Um, yeah. So looking, looking at the dashboard, it just, the, the questions that it, it brought up for me was, what do we know about what sort of um, incentives or support programs are available in our county for Im improving on these indicators? And what do we know about who's accessing or not accessing those programs? And so thinking about are, are there data sets, for example, at the state level with greenhouse gas reduction fund um, that we could pull from that might help kind of capture some of the some of the, the programs that are available at the state level and get a handle on um, how, how beneficial those are at our county level. Um, that, was, that was one example that came up. And with that program in particular, it's really a, a lot of the work is looking at the interface of energy and water conservation. So thinking about, I know these are all standalone indicators, but thinking about how we kind of get at some of those questions of how a lot of these, um, these indicators are interrelated. Thanks, Lisa. Um, I don't know, Lauren, if you want to add anything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and in that um, conversation, we also, well, Lisa mentioned just, you know, she was looking at the promising practices section. Um, and is Cindy still here? I don't think so. So um, the platform has um, the uh, promising practices section, which is a section that shows evidence-based um, programs and activities across the count, uh, country that are addressing um, something in the realm of this impact area, um, So, um, or all the impact areas, but these ones are the ones that are tagged. Um, and actually, you can... Um, um, submit a local promising practice if you don't see yours represented. So Lisa noticed one um, 
that was related to her work, um, but it was based in Maine. Um, and so we have done some, so um, generally uh, local agencies will submit a promising practice um, to be highlighted on the platform. And then it's available to platforms across the country as um, as a resource. Um, and the Nicoles have done some work um, with uh, Cindy Wong, a local researcher to add some promising practices. I don't know if you wanna say anything um, about that, um, Nicole. Um, it isn't like a super la labor intensive process, but the Nicoles took this project on as part of their inv um, core investments work um, last last year, year before last. Yeah, we're, we're in the slow process of updating as well. Um, and that's just to make sure that if there are local promising practices that they get included in as as local examples on that broader um, database. It It is the promising practices part of data share is um, dependent on HCI conduit that the vendor that runs the platform. And so they gather examples from other parts of the country as well. Um, but they're, they're inconsistent. Some of them are, are dated or um, not as comprehensive and they depend on people submitting examples um, as well. So we're just trying to boost the, um, the comprehensiveness of what what's captured about the local promising practices, as well as hoping that that more examples will populate from other parts of the country as well, because it's always helpful to see what's going on elsewhere, what other people are trying and doing and how they are succeeding or what they learn, learn from their own evaluations. And um, if you do happen to hit the jackpot with a promising practice that's particularly relevant to your work, it is really, sometimes they have all kinds of great stuff in there, you know, different kinds of evaluation instruments, um, different kinds, even phone numbers of people you can call and talk to, very old school, <laughs> um, and other kinds of reports. So yeah, so that's a good place to check. I don't know if you want to add anything, Nicole. Um, I think maybe if we can come back to that at the end so we can uh, move on to the other groups and then, but yes, it is a great resource, uh, resource itself. Um, we do have some capacity to help submit kind of basically collate and collect the information that's needed to submit to HCI and then they do the review and decision process about where it goes in the promising practices database. Um, why don't we move on to group three? That was the group that I was in. Uh, we were focusing on uh, impact three, safe, affordable, accessible recreational spaces and I'll let uh, Mariah is gonna be our reporter for that group. So I'll let her take it over. Thank you so much, Nicole. And it's great to see everyone and um, so many good people here today. I'm really grateful for people's time. Um, we had a great group with Nicole, Najib, Miguel, and myself. And yeah, we were looking at um, indicator three, um, which is something I, we all think about a lot. Um, and really what we looked at, we started by looking at the first indicator um, and and sort of digging into the data. And I think it was really helpful. Um, Nicole kind of walked us through, you know, this is what it looks like on the, the surface, but then let's dig in and see where it came from and let's dig a little further, let's dig a little further. Um, so that was really helpful just in process. And then what I would say in terms of a headline for our conversation, it was really, um, what story does this indicator tell at face value and then what did that bring up for each of us? Um, and what was sort of the, the general theme was that, you know, it, it had, there's some good information there, um, that it was sort of foundational, but, um, but for each of us coming from, you know, different sectors and, and looking for different information, it was clear that it would be more meaningful if it was combined with other data. So it was looking at, you know, access to um, facilities, basically parks or recreational facilities. And it looks like we're just, just, you know, hitting it out of the park is what it looks like. 95% of us live somewhere close to a, a park or recreation facility. But what we all wanted to, to sort of consider was how would we combine that with, for example, obesity rates or um, actual measurements of who's actually using these, you know, 
and the quality of each of them. How big is that space? You know, what's available in that space um, to kind of dig in a little deeper to how it's affecting. So it was a really great conversation. I think we probably could have talked a lot longer. Um, I think I'll probably pause there and just see if any of the other um, team members want to comment. <laughs> well, also we, we talk about how safe the, 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 the spaces are because sometimes we need some uh, guidance on how, how we can proceed or what we cannot do during, in those uh, spaces to make it safe for us and for our families. Thank you so much, Miguel. Mm -hmm. I think I think that was sort of the 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 gist, um, Najib. But did we leave anything out? Thanks, nope, Mariah. You, you covered it all. Okay, sounds good. Back to you, Nicole. Okay, and then our fourth group was with Eric. Uh, Impact Four: Safe, Affordable, Accessible Transportation System. Do you have someone to tell us what your indicator was and highlights from your discussion? It was Randa, but she stepped away for five minutes, so I'll be able to give most of the gist. We looked at um, workers community by public transportation indicator, and a lot of the group, we mostly focused on like why this is telling and that showing a little bit why it is like people are using uh, more public trans or actually using less transportation. But, and then we dived in a little bit deeper to more like zip codes slash census track places to see like which of the counties it is. And we noticed that Santa Cruz was one of the leading with one of the leadings with the most transportation, public transportation people are taking. What we also discovered too, is that a lot of the younger generation are using more of the public transportation versus the older generation. And then what I thought was really interesting and a good topic to talk about was actually an impact too in regards to the greenhouse gas emissions generated by transportation which is a great like like culminating of the of the impact areas and how much like they intertwine a little bit and our group really wanted to like go into more of a detail about like why or how like these indicators or like how these emissions are like going down and trying to hit more goals within Santa Cruz County, along with like, why is this happening? Why are we seeing a lot more of this greenhouse gas emissions going down in regards to transportation? And Hudit brought up a really good point in the discussion. Like they want, she wanted to know why, uh, for example, like, based on like public transport, not, but based on transportation by the public or by like personal, like how much do they spend their time driving and that type of stuff. If you'd like to talk a little bit more about it. That sounds like a good discussion and, and that you also took the liberty of looking at other indicators, not just the, uh, or impact areas, not just the chosen one, uh, which I think, it sounds like it happens a little bit in each of our groups, right? That and that's, I think, exactly part of the point of this, right? That there's no, you know, there's no one indicator that can tell the whole story ever, all the time. And so, you know, in these uh, workshops like this, we focus on specific indicators just to get that, build that habit, build that muscle of looking at data share, really understanding what's there, what isn't there. Um, but that we hope it leads to the kinds of discussions and questions that came up in all of our groups. Those questions about, well, what about this or what else or what comes before this data or what, what happens after? <laughs> so we talked in our group also about, I forget if you said this in your overview, Nicole, that the results menu, when we were co-designing it a few years ago, is really laid out most, and it works for most of the impact areas to function almost like a logic model, right? That when you look at some of the indicators, we wanna be able to, uh, by impact areas, we're thinking about what would we, if we wanna achieve this um, desired results at a community level in any one of those core conditions, what are the things that we would look to first? 
in terms of knowledge, access, opportunity? What do we hope that would lead to in terms of um, usage of services, quality of services? What do we hope that would lead to in terms of behavior change, skill change? And what would that hopefully lead to in terms of uh, status, health status, educational status, economic status, things like that. And so I love, I love just how that kind of progression and logic model way of thinking uh, really kind of came up organically in each of the each of the groups, it sounds like. Are there any final thoughts or questions after having the discussions in your small groups, hearing each other's insights and thoughts during this report out? Any final thoughts about this particular uh, core condition, the data that is or isn't available? It's exciting that there's so much specific information. Sorry, I had to step out. I was supposed to report out and I got a call. But anyhow, um, yeah, anyhow, we were talking about like little little tweaks that could be made to to make it even more solid and um yeah it's just exciting to see all this information easily accessible mm -hmm. thanks randa mariah you want to add something i just want to throw out there you know um one of uh, I've been thinking about this a lot. I know that's not a surprise to, to some of the folks here who I, I talked to. Um, but one of the sticking points is sort of who has responsibility or who holds, who drives um, both defining, you know, the next steps in terms of data collection and also um, how the data is reported and when and by whom. Um, and there's some wonderful, you know, entrees that I see. There's a way that you can, for example, submit data, right? Um, but <clears throat> I'm interested in whether you see movement from the county side um, to, for example, help, um, you know, nonprofits who are working in these um, uh, in these areas, you know, have some kind of budget to actually put work into data collection or if there is um, other support, you know, to to move this forward um, that you see, I, I do really feel that the data is out there, right? And so who drives that next step of, of getting it into the system so we can all benefit? There's some good questions. Um, there's probably a few different ways to um begin answering that and some of it is um kind of the role that nicole and i think of in terms of core and ways that we might be able to help um drive some of that or support some of that some of those probably more of like the data share like what's possible within the data share platform um that eva would be a good person to speak to and then I think part of um part of our purpose also in having these kinds of conversations is because <laughs> that you know we know that there are a lot of things that we don't know either in terms of what data is out there and so um part of the next steps is also okay where is there some collective energy and interest in figuring out the next steps so it's these these kinds of discussions are really valuable to us as well to to hear like oh okay some of you are the holders of that data. Um, Eva, is there anything you want to say or reflections you want to share in response to that? Um, well, I mean, I think the piece about interest in shared data there's so so at the macro level the platform can provide more than is there and like i said in the beginning of our conversation we are continuously improving and working hand in hand with our vendor um those macro level data sets have a very important role in terms of just putting some basic framing around our local community um, investments in healthy environments 
um, but it's never going to tell the whole picture. So we know that Agencies that have come together under a collective impact um, measurement scope or um, that are coalition based and are gathering similar data points to bring together generally to a funder or, um, you know, to their steering committee to gauge progress on their, um, you know, on their activities. Um, uh, that those data sets have been integrated into the platform under the local progress section. Um, so like an example of that would be the Safety Net Coalition or SafeRx that have used, you know, the framing of the macro data to be able to really understand the micro data um, that they're collecting as a coalition. Um, and those coalitions have defined those measurement points themselves. And then um, we um, can update those um, local progress pages. That's a, a, a bit of a process and um, I'm happy to talk to anyone who's interested in it, but that's one solution. Um, and the, the platform also has um, a whole funding section, funding opportunity section. So it does um, get updated all the time from our platform vendor. And um, so that's, that's particular funding generally scoped for um, data um, projects um, and is a good place to take a look. Um, and it wouldn't be something that we would drive, uh, you know, um, but um, we could support um, any um, coalition or agency that was trying to um, think about their um, their data systems um, in integrating those with data share. Um, we we have a I'll say we have a governance board that is um, collaborative, so we know that these processes take time, um, but the door is always open. And then I'll just add really quickly before we move to our closing, um, in terms of our role and Nicole's and my role in core, like the, that's um, that's where the core results menu originated. And it was a very collaborative process with many different people and groups to come up with the core conditions, the impact areas, the indicators. And so for us, that's a living structure. Um, and so part of our ongoing work is to keep working and talking and collaborating with groups to help us fine tune the core results menu. And so if there are, because especially with some of those uh, indicators where there's a data not available yet, <laughs> some of those just represent, someone thought this this would be a good thing to know about our community, and but we just don't know. Is that data available? Is it feasible to collect it? If so, how would that happen? So there are conversations like that, that um, there are probably some ways that Nicole and I can help um, support those kinds of conversations, you know, maybe not necessarily leading a whole entire data collection effort or collective impact effort, but certainly can be thought partners in, like I'm thinking of Mariah, the group of environmental organizations and parks and rec um, agencies that are already meeting and talking together about this. I imagine there's a wealth of data. You, you, I mean, you mentioned some of them in our small group, right? That um, would be good to look at. Okay, is there, are there data like that 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 exist? Could provide us that more um, fine-tuned look at the county by geographic areas, um, and then you know, once we figure out some of those things, then maybe it's like this easier handoff to data share. Okay, how do we get the, <laughs> how to get it on the platform? Here it is in a in a in a way that um, is more you know organized or or helps us understand what actually is available. Okay, on that note, we've got a couple minutes left before we uh, finish finish up here. And while Nicole tells you about upcoming events, I'm going to launch a feedback poll about today's session. Great, thanks, Nicole, and thanks everyone for joining today and participating in the small group sessions. Keep those ideas coming. As Nicole said, there are lots of different ways to, um, to connect around the, the data, both what's there and what's missing. And this is the kind of thing that we hope will keep fleshing out data share and making it both the results menu and the broader data share platform more useful to you in your day-to-day -day work um, and that we can all learn from each other. 
So in that spirit, we're working our way through all eight of the core conditions. And next up in April will be the, the same kind of discussion, but about the indicators related to safe and just communities. So if you are interested in that and, um, and or know others who might be, please help us spread the word. And then that'll be followed by a similar session for stable, affordable housing and shelter, and that'll happen in June. So um, that'll conclude our, this series uh, between data share and core investments, looking at each of the core conditions in a little more depth. And we welcome ideas for other um, sessions like this that can explore the data on the results menu and on data share together. So let us know if you have other thoughts, but meanwhile, we hope we'll see you either at one of those sessions or other um, data share and core Institute events coming up. And we'll let you know about that by email. And thanks for filling out the feedback poll. We really pay attention to your feedback and use it in these ongoing sessions um, to change them as appropriate. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. It was really nice to um, have this conversation today.